Hi, welcome to my video. I'm Jennifer Roberts. You're catching me on my YouTube channel, True Divine 44, BitChute channel, True Divine 44, Facebook page, True Divine 44, and the True Divine for both Instagram and Twitter. Any likes, shares, subscribes, comments, greatly, greatly appreciated and much love to everybody who does that thus far. I appreciate you all so much. And uh, to all of the new clients, thank you too. I appreciate you so much. So this is where I put out the free content that I bring out on a daily basis to help support, guide and inspire those who want to be supported, guided and inspired. I give you the energy work that I do and the tarot work that I do, combining the two to help you recognize the energies within you, around you and within others, to help you discern your way through your day to reach your highest possible potential. This is what I want for you. Whatever doesn't resonate, ditch it. This is general. Take what resonates and leave the rest. So this is for the 10th of December, January, 10th of January 2021. I will get it eventually. Got a hair on my lip. Um, oh, sorry. Powerful day. Again, uh, it is two o'clock in the morning here. I uh, couldn't sleep. So did some more work and then thought I'll get the reading out. Um, it, I can't explain fully on here uh, the times that we're in and the warnings that were given early on. Uh, I tried to give out warnings early on um, last year and the year before regarding what was coming up and it's all come to pass and more. And so I feel pretty confident in the timelines and the options of those timelines that I'm seeing now. And we need to do, take certain steps. We need to take them surely and assertively. And we need to start with our individual lives in order to be able to do that in the external, on the external, in the collective. And these are times that many still do not see or contemplate where we are at and the job that is at hand. There are things coming in to this reality that, be, that are being invited in by so-called powers that be, and even they are being played thinking in their arrogance that they can control these kind of windows, these kind of portals that they've opened up regarding um, the frequency kind of technology that they're using. These kind of portals that, you know, they think they were in control of. And there are beings that should not be here that are entering into this realm both physically and energetically and we see that we're going to see that even more so through the algorithms through these computer systems through this ai and that there are certain beings that far surpass the intelligence of the so-called powers that be, the puppets that we see, that have already infiltrated this realm via their um, using of their consciousness to direct and command the AI systems here, the algorithmic systems here. And so there's so much to come. And so it's important to be prepared for this and to lift your mind out of the um, psyopsed, hijacked reality that we've been living in for so long. To open your mind to possibilities that 
like a few said when I was giving out warnings regarding what was coming this year and last um, in 2019, thought I was going crazy. A couple of people were worried about me because they could not believe in the reality that they've been existing in that there would ever, ever be um, people being isolated on house arrest, basically, that people would be forcibly arrested for crimes that are not crimes, and all of the other things that have that have come to the fore. So if you think back to then, if you think of somebody like me saying this was going to happen, and initially your reaction would be to say, poppycock. Try and think of this situation as that, but on an expanded level, on a bigger level, in that um, try and think of this being uh, the kind of things that are very difficult to imagine and expect that and more. It's important to be prepared for this. It's important to be able to see past the reality that we've been psyopsed into for so long. It's important that we are aware, that we are discerning, that we are alert, and so much more. So, on second, I'm going to do one thing and then come straight back. I'm just going to pause one second. Hey, I'm back. Sorry about that. That leaky tap, that pipe, it's driving me crazy because it keeps making all sorts of noises. And I'm still waiting for somebody to come out and fix it. But because of COVID, I'm waiting a long time. So I was saying be aware of everything and be open to anything as we prepare for going into the next stages of what has been a long, drawn out, uh, ritualistic, gestational magic spell. And so as we come further into January, we're going to start to see the next stages starting to roll out, in particular from the 20th onwards. And this is where we need to be aware of what we're facing, no more complacency. Um, no more conformity to really show by living in a divine and sovereign way, by not putting up and shutting up because one is slightly better than the other on the political stage, not being, let's put it this way, that these so-called powers that be and the puppets that they dance before us. They show us each and every day that if we evade some tax payments, if we um, steal a loaf of bread to feed our family, if we... Um, were to, you know, drive without insurance just to keep a damn job, but we can't afford the insurance. If we were to do any of that and more, they would throw the, throw the law at us, the law within the systems that they built. They've done that all of the time, they hold us to such account regarding from the smallest things to the largest things. Yet, we've been so complacent to say that we know what caused planes to crash in, in certain buildings. We know what happened in Canada with the royal family. 
and a picnic. We know that these so-called powers that be evade paying their taxes. We know all of this and more, yet we are complacent enough to still fight for them to maintain their positions because they represent one side or the other. We are still psyoped enough to fall into complacency regarding that and this rule for thee and not for me consensus when actually it should be the other way round. If they've wanted to enjoy the status and enjoy the high paying salaries for these positions, then we should have not been so complacent. We should have been holding them to an even higher account for the privileges that they get for such a role. Yet we haven't, and this is where it's gotten us. We are dealing with psychopaths. We are dealing with narcissistic psychopaths, some of which aren't human as we know it. Some of which some of us recognize energetically the differences in our beings. And so this is where we have to make a stand. This is where we have to say no more. This is where we have to say your systems don't work and be brave enough to have remembrance regarding a time when we didn't need those systems in place because we weren't dealing with manufactured problem after problem, war after war, outbreak after outbreak that would never actually have happened if these so-called powers that be weren't being puppeted by beings but in the shadows because they wouldn't exist, because there wouldn't be psychopaths manufacturing them to exist. And so this is where we have to think more clearly about this with more discernment, less complacency and say no more. Open up your businesses. Be with your family. Let children play. So let's get into the reading. <laughs> wow. Impressive times for sure. And exciting times because this is where we get to make these decisions. This is where we get to be in our place of power. This is where we get to experience um, a, a delivery of liberation. This is where we get to experience what that feels like on the other side of victory. But we need to get passionate about it. We need to get um, involved in it. We need to be um, entrenched in it, but not in it as the way of the psyops, wherever they decide to direct us, no in a way of a collective of individuals standing together as the all, as the one, to say, this is the only one that is coming into this realm. There is no new one coming in. This is, this is us. You know, there's no new one order coming in, basically. This is, this is us liberating ourselves to move into this next cycle of outside the box thinking, of collective thinking, of individuals wanting to serve other individuals because we recognize we are part of a collective. Being in symbiotic relationship with nature, being more connected to it and not being psyops into thinking that we just exist on top of this recognizing where we are in all of this. We're in a beautiful place of balance, of flow. So, sorry, this is for the 10th of January, nearly said December, 2021. So we've got the death card on. And once I get through this reading, you'll see why I'm a bit whew, with the energies because they are a bit, whew, you know, they, they, they keep sort of taking over me a bit and washing over me and uh, not allowing me to sleep. And um, they're intense. And just as Wayne Steiger said, raw and unfiltered. That is the best 
uh, terminology I've heard for the energies thus far. Death card, major arcana, number 13. Important number to um, some uh, Masonic values, but also an important number to us. This transition in um, the death card. Now, I want to speak to there being more information coming out regarding information that is being hidden, regarding actual physical death that is being caused um, as we speak. And be aware of it um, affecting, and I keep here in New York, particularly doctors and nurses with that, um, how do I put it? Introduction of um, a squirt in an arm. I'm not very good at this, am I? Um, this is a deliberate tactic. It's just one of the tactics of that squirt in that it's a deliberate tactic in particular in the USA to take out key workers, to take out those that would help when people need it most in the future. I realize this is out there. I realize this is heavy, but I've always promised to deliver the messages I'm led to deliver. And this is what I picked up on. Um, in particularly, I feel like I connected to a female who this affected and has um, experienced this, as well as um, some of her comrades. Um, so that's heavy. That's true. Um, I felt it as, as true as any visionary um, connection that I have. Uh, and it's, it's difficult to take. Because these people, on the whole, you know, I used to be a nurse and on the whole, you know, are there because they want to help. And um, they've been gagged, they've been um, told to keep quiet, they've been threatened. Um, and so they have. And a lot of them have made that decision, not through just complacency, but to one, maintain their job, their livelihood, but two, a lot of them have done that because they've thought, well, better we do that and still be able to be here to serve those that we can than not be here at all. So look out for that information. It's going to come out eventually. Um, but, you know, they, they, they're relatively young as well. And so this is where this is the true warning of this. Remember, um, in past readings, I picked up on four different squirts with four different compositions and that they would be deliberately given for varying different reasons, for varying different effects to different parts of society. Remember, I said this was the drive for DNA. This was the drive for plasma domination in the UK that was immediately then sold to um, CH, let's say, that country. And so this is where the, 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 the refined these four and what they would be composed of regarding the information that that plasma gave them that blood plasma. And so we're starting to see, and others will start to see when the information comes out, the rollout and the um, reality of these 
um, for squirts. And so sadly, that's what I picked up on, uh, very much so. And so this is, um, this is going to continue for as long as we allow it. And the reason that they're being so blatant is because, one, they've been forced to act a bit quicker regarding people waking up to um, the child trafficking in particular and all that goes with that. And that case, you know, that um, doesn't hang itself like Christmas lights, you know. So this is heavy. And so I'm sorry if I'm a bit all over because it's hard connecting with this, especially when you know it was so preventable. And um, we're going to see more of this if we allow this to continue. It's time to be um, very firm regarding this issue because this is um, the part of the plan that called for um, less people in this realm. And so we see that. Now, on another note, we see with this death card, a huge transition in a marching forward, a leveling up spiritually, an awareness that has grown, an expansion that has expanded, um, an inner standing, an overstanding, an understanding. It also speaks of um, death to an old self and rebirth to a version of you that is much, much closer to your true self. The death of um, many psyops that, that we used to be so attached to, the death of um, many attachments that we um, used to have. And so this comes in with the Hierophant. I mean, the death card and the Hierophant. So this Hierophant you can see here in the dragon deck, this brings in um, a huge expansion and a huge growth and inner standing, overstanding and understanding of mind blowing spiritual truths, um, this reality truths, truths about yourself, uh, just a huge um, leveling up regarding uh, taking um, the, the red pill, so to speak. This, this as if your eyes have had um, layers peeled away from them. This has been, this is coming through today like a surge of energy, like a, like a, um, what is it like? Like when a, when a, um, when a dam breaks and the water just bellows through, bursts through, it's, it's like this. And with that being said, this touches those who have had the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And this creates a huge aspect to the separation, the, a huge um, delivery of an even bigger separation of those that are aware and alert and awake to those that are deeply asleep. Don't be afraid and don't be um, uh, over, overthrown. If you start to see auras, if you haven't been able to see auras before, don't be um, thrown off by this. This is part of your um, new level of awakening. For a few of you, really don't be thrown off also if you start to see beings under the skin as in completely different beings to the human that others see standing before them 
that you can see the true um, nature of the being under certain people's skin. Having this sight can be shocking. Having this sight can, can throw you off. But for, for some of you, that is another level of um, getting closer to your true self, to your true capabilities, to, to your gifts. On the collective stage, look out for um, a prominent death. Look out for um, a prominent physical death that will be talked about quite a bit. The Hierophant being the number five shares all of the knowledge that has been hidden in what we call secret societies. Look, you can see all of the symbology here with the ladder and the star. And there's, there's more and more in this card as you look into it. And so this speaks of, and you can see the mist in the card. And so this speaks of, still haven't done my nails, right? This speaks of um, um, what has been hidden previously is, is being given to you. Information that was, that was foggy at first is being made clear. And this is what the secret societies have been um, using to harness and um, direct the collective. Whereas there are many of us understanding more of this, inner standing more of this information and being able to use it, being able to, with this death card, really transition and level up into it like we've never done before in this lifetime a lot of you are remembering things you're having remembrance you're having flashes of times when you knew this knowledge that this knowledge does not feel completely new this knowledge feels quite comfortable and um, quite easy to understand all of a sudden to understand there's something about it that you have certain flashes of past memories in past lives regarding it. And this is huge because this is part of the resistance. This is part of the resistance to this hijack that is trying to be um, laid out of this next cycle. And so this is exciting regarding, yes, there are going to be things that are going to shock people. And there are going to be things that come out, like I mentioned at the start of this reading, that are going to um, be very, very sad and, and very, very heavy. But at the same time, with this surge of energy, they can't really hold onto this they can't really it's gotten away from them there are certain people that have come that have chosen to be here at this time to be this resistance that we've seen this happen before and so that we've come back yes we've been entrenched in this reality but many of us have survived this reality and all of the things that it brings because often if you want to label yourself a warrior, a light worker, however it resonates with you, often those people have pretty tough lives. And it's my, um, it's my knowing that on the most part, this happens because we, 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 we are brave enough to gamble. We're brave enough to gamble and, and walk this tightrope um, as to allowing ourselves to be entrenched in the very realities that we want to liberate people from. And we have to go through that process almost to navigate our way to really understand where 
others are coming from when they feel trapped or when they put up with oppression or when they put up with abuse so that we could truly help because we can truly say that we've been there, we've done that. We've liberated ourselves from that. So let me guide you. It has a big impact when we can do that. And so nothing has been wasted, but it takes a lot of you to finally recognize how powerful you are, to finally um, have this death of ego that would even have you embarrassed about recognizing and understanding who you really are and the power that you really hold and the mission that you want to complete. Because with this, you embolden yourself. You, you, you really fill those etheric boots again. And then you become in the physical reality, real boots on the ground with real oomph behind them. And that's exactly what we need. But this also speaks of the Hierophant, these secret societies have known about frequency, using frequency in magic, using frequency regarding free energy, using frequency in general, being that all is energy. And um, there's something about today that I just keep hearing heart attacks that if we could get the true numbers and the true statistics today, it would be really interesting as to see whether there are a, there's a spike in real heart attacks, because I think there's certain frequency um, apparatus, let's say, that can cause this, particularly for those that have pacemakers. So keep an eye out for this for me. Leave a comment on that because I find that really interesting. And I'd love to discern whether it is that, hopefully not, or whether it is this energy that I'm feeling of people's heart just stopping when they see these other beings behind the skin, when they see um, these auras that they've never seen before and, and things like that. Does their heart stop for a second? I don't know. So keep an eye on that for me too. Um, I'll update you if I come across anything, but I really appreciate all of your input regarding things like that, because the more eyes that we have to see and ears that we have to hear, the more we can co collaborate and have that dialogue and have a greater understanding of even more of what is going on. And so the next card is the Hermit, number nine, another major arcana. So we're starting to see and getting into why I'm a bit blown away by this, why I do get absorbed in the energies. So I can get a bit freaky when I'm in the energies. And so this number nine, the Hermit card has kept coming up for those that listen to me regularly. Um, it's kept coming up and you can see here, it's a beautiful card for me. I love this warrior and there's the blind for me and silent warrior. And he doesn't even... He doesn't even intimidate regarding a stare. He keeps his head down. He doesn't even need to see what you need to see. The energy of this is just the invitation to go within. And all he does is hold up this lantern and he holds it up high and holds his staff for um, security on Rocky Foundation. Because often when we go within, there are things that we hide away, things that we don't want to deal with, attachments that we don't want to let go of. Um, and it's rocky ground when we go in there, you know, it's, it's unsteady ground. It's, you know, um, sharp rocks that we can come across that, you know, we get, then that's part of the reason that we are so easily corrupted into not looking within and just now we're just externalizing everything. And so, why is this so important? Because when we have done this inner work, we are far harder to be controlled by outside forces. 
we are um, far harder to make conform to other people's agendas, other people's will and wants. And this inner work um, releases us from such burdens. So when we have been holding something, a wound, a memory, a, an abuse, or even a blissful time that is now just that blissful time because you feel like you've got nothing else because this person has left your life either through death or through just leaving. We hide those things away. And so when we do that, we are acting from a place that is a wound, that isn't a balanced place. This is where we can get triggered. This is where we can be controlled so much easily, easier. And so to do this inner work is so important right now. And to be able to see clearly on the outside with these two eyes, we have to be able to be enlightened from within. We have to be able to um, shine that light from within to the outside, because that's when we can really see the realities. That's when we can really lift ourselves above any sigh or forget above any lie and see exactly what it is and what it is here for regarding, is it there for your good? No, it's there for your bad, yeah. So it's so important to come from a place of um, stillness and fertility from within, creativity, love, rather than from a place of brokenness. When we come from a place of brokenness, you know, history repeats. We repeat the same cycle over and over again in our lives, maybe with different characters ent enter it in to fulfill that script, but we keep maintaining that same script over and over again. Well, you see this on the collective stage in the so-called powers that be, you see that they basically just draw out this same script even down to the Bible, having the, just the same script as all of the other scripts, just with different character names. And so this is where we shine light on that. And so we go into our place of the inner grounds and we be the silent and blind warrior and just feel our way through. Any wounds, we transmute the energy of, take the lessons out of it and ditch the rest. Because wounds fester. And when we come from a, a festering place, when we come from a place of um, stagnation, you know, it, it's poison. It's poison. And so we can often act in a poisonous way. And we see that a lot in especially 2020 and this year thus far, that there are a lot of people around that are ready to spit their poison at you for having your own opinion, for being your own person, for, for being divine, for being sovereign. So this is super important to continue to do this inner work, to continue to weed out that inner ground to not allow it to be your weakness, but allow it to be your strength, your core strength. Allow you to create from such a fertile inner ground rather than something that is in stagnation that would poison whatever you want to create anyway because it's being created from a place of poison. So it's a different kind of stillness. There's this beautiful stillness that is just quietly brave, wise, intuitive. And there's the stagnation that is still, but it is unclean. It gets poisonous, it, 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 it's damaging. And so we see the extremes of the two and I know which side I would want to be on. So anything any inner work that you feel um, that you're not, you haven't dealt with. Um, it's important that for you as an individual that you deal with it, but also right now 
as the collective, we need you to deal with it. We need you to find that bravery from within, to go within, to weed out anything that would be of a weakness to you so that you can be this beacon of light that you, so many of you are, to help guide others on their journey. So we've got the six, the number six, the lover's card, Major Arcana keeps coming up over the last few days. And you see with these two dragons, the divine feminine and divine masculine are intertwined. You see the divine feminine here actually being a bit lower down and holding up the divine masculine. And this is where we find ourselves um, making a major decision. And of course, doing that inner work makes it so that we're making this decision from a balanced place, from a place that is of wholeness with this yin and yang symbol up here, we see that it, it's a whole. But if you look at the shape of it, it's phi, it's life. It's, it, it's the shape of, 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 of phi, this, this perfect um, curve that the two halves of you create that whole. And from this whole balanced place, from this place of um, inner cleanliness, with this inner work, with this hermit, we come, from, we come to this decision from a very balanced place. So it has very different outcomes. And so whatever this tough decision is for a lot of you, it is to let go of some things, um, to be able to see uh, certain things that you're still attached to, that you still affiliate with, that you still have hope in outside of self. And this is where on the table, it looks like this. The hermit card is directly shining the light on this Hierophant card. So there are a lot of people that are um, coming to a space where they are deciding to walk away from um, certain organized religions, certain ways of thinking, certain belief systems, certain feelings towards things. Um, and certainly there are some of you that are making huge decisions to stop supporting um, which can be a bit heartbreaking, the systems that we've been living under, whether that be political, health, um, you know, authority-wise, the police, the, there's, to, to be able to truly see them from this balanced place from within, with this true inner light, this lantern that this hermit card is carrying, to be able to accept and see um, this reality and how it has been hijacked, um, how it has been uh, controlled by those that had no right to claim it or control it. And so with that being said, we come to the judgment card and the judgment card is damn, it's not giving up and not giving up. I've even left it out of the deck. Um, and even in the reading, it still becomes apparent that I shouldn't have let, left it out. Just testing myself. I'm always testing anyway. And then I'll use another deck and bang, there it is. It comes out anyway. So this judgment card is speaking of this is the call. This is the time. This is what a lot of you from being here from the first instance, from the first memory, have felt foreign to this place, but then at the same time felt at one with the trees when you're in the forest or with the sea when you're on the beach. And so we see here that a lot of you, even from childhood, have been able to discern that something's up here because on this side, nature is so beautifully balanced. It's in beautiful relationship with, with each particle that's upon it, each plant, each animal, each seed. It actually helps itself 
the winds carry the seeds, the soil, you know, absorbs the seed, envelops the seed, the rain, you know, feeds it. And so even just from a seed's journey, you see as a child, you look at that and a lot of you have seen that, well, that's right. That's one aspect that feels right, that feels at home for me. But then a lot of you in um, your childhood homes felt like you didn't belong. You could see the relationships people had with one another, the hatred, the division. And that felt so foreign to you, so odd. And that is because even as a child, you were discerning the fact that this reality, nature is there, the mother is there, the divine feminine is exalted in nature. But these beings that hijacked this realm and put like an overlay and an overlay and another overlay and so on and so forth of illusion, through control, manipulation. Even as a child, you could see that, or you could just feel, if you couldn't even put it into words, you could just feel that there was something up. There was something that was not right. And you were right. And so for so long, you've recognized that you feel different, that you even stand out within your own family or your friendship groups. Some of you finding it difficult even to maintain friendships because you realized how superficial they'd become. That a lot of people can't even be as, as elevated as a seed working with the wind and then working with the earth and the rain, using all of its elements and, and giving back when it grows its fruits. So as a child, you knew this day was coming and you sort of psyops yourself sometimes, a lot of the times into thinking you were going crazy. And for a lot of you, there were all too many people around you just to say that you were too, as a child. But the time is now. That recognition of this realm being hijacked is coming to the fore. And you feel this intuitively. And so this judgment card is speaking of this. To really let go of that that does not serve you. We need to be literally light, both weight-wise, physically, um, the baggage that we're carrying, the people that we're carrying, that, that continuously decide to be in low frequency, or conflict type frequency. The things, the limitations, the labels that were given to us and that we accepted and even gave to ourselves, all of those things that need to be shed and left behind. The things that we have learned along the way that are serving to us, that are um, giving to us regarding the lessons that we have learned, the experiences that we've had, the connections that we did manage to make. This is all coming to the fore. And that that you felt in your bones, even from being a child, the time is now. This trumpet keeps on calling. There are people gathering. We're not in as few people as people think. Don't be psyops by the way that they're keeping us apart on social media and whatnot and literally shadowing, banning, shadow banning, is it? Shadow banning people regarding, you know, who says what. So you're being called to recognize who you are, to see your path, to really be bold and let go of the fear of judgment of others. Because this is what you came to do. And for a lot of you, that is difficult to even contemplate, let alone say. Because, you know, you're, you're, you're a beautiful light and, you know, you don't want to be an ego and you're humble. But there's a difference between being humble 
and being self-deprivating by not accepting and not exalting in who you really are and what your real powers are. And so this judgment card keeps calling and it's going to be a slightly different call for each and every one of us. And it's for each and every one of us to understand what, what that calling entails. But to remember that this is not a done deal yet. This next hijack into this next realm is not a done deal yet. They haven't gotten us there yet. They haven't delivered their worst yet. And so it's important that we find our path so that we can stand in it and, and demand that this is not done, that they do not succeed in this hijack. And that's mainly why a lot of you came here for this pivotal moment, which is where it can get exciting, which is where you can infuse yourself with love, with happiness, with laughter, even in the midst of all of this. And that is what defines a warrior, to be able to be still and balanced amongst the chaos is terrifying to the so-called powers that be, terrifying. And so with that being said, a lot of you are just birthing into this beautiful level of expanded, more knowledgeable, more wisdom-filled version of self. And this is where you find where your path is. This is where you find where your calling is. So whatever it is you're being pulled towards today, whatever it is that you're being led towards today, that you know is of good value, let go of that fear of judgment. Let go of that fear of um, chastisement and go forward on your path being light in your light etherical body in your physical body release that baggage that would weigh you down however that baggage um, manifests in it in your life personally now on the bottom of the deck we've got no sorry the next card to clarify that we've got the two of wands so this is still where um it's embryonic, it's cultivating. And so you don't have to go hell for leather today regarding, I've got to do my path, I've got to find my path, I've got to find my mission. Allow it to cultivate within you, allow it to be seen and felt from within with this hermit card. With this lantern being able to Look in the darkest corners and really understand what you're looking at. So this is embryonic. It, it's, it's rolling out within you. It's, um, it's expanding within you. And eventually it will manifest into you knowing what physical steps to take. But for now, this is more about... Um, doing the within allowing that fire to cultivate allowing that creativity to flow and doing all of the things that help you get there meditation exercise speaking with friends and family speaking with with um, loved ones staying connected that's when you'll see the path more clearly rather than banging your head against a brick wall, say, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Um, there's something for a lot of you that, again, this remembrance of the past, um, remembrance of better times, remembrance of um, emotional connections that you've built along the way in this lifetime. And there's a, something in, a, in that for a lot of you regarding lessons in particular that grandmas um, gave that passed down to you that gave um, knowledge of uh, that you'd forgotten but has always been there and is coming up again one second
Yikes. Talking. So this six of cups. There's a lot in um, grandma's message for whoever that resonates with. Uh, certain key phrases, certain key words that she said that actually were preparing you for this moment. You just didn't know at the time. So whoever that is, if you feel confident enough to do so, please leave a comment because I'd love to know exactly what grandma said. But certain just sentences that she repeated and, and phrases that she repeated to you are coming back to the fore and actually um, will serve you well going forward regarding cultivating this path before you, the path that you're supposed to be on. Uh, certain people have got to let go of certain emotional connections regarding um, emotional uh, cords that have been built up, um, energetic cords that have been built up that are um, emotionally um, connective. And that's where the death card comes in. Letting go of this nostalgia of past times maybe for some of you um, regarding how good past times were and um, looking at the past with rose colored glasses. Uh, there's a, there's a needs to be a death to that. There needs to be a transition from that um, because that could become a weakness for some. And certainly for people who are fast asleep will find it um, very triggering to let go, to be faced with letting go of certain aspects of the life that they're emotionally connected to still and so you might see that around you today amongst people uh, where they're externalizing to a huge extent <sighs> it's raw and so the next card on the bottom of the deck for the clarifying deck is the strength card number eight and you see here it's so much to do about the balance of the divine feminine divine masculine and these kundalini snakes here going up the staff, which represents the spinal cord, which represents your backbone and the surge of energy creating strength, creating balance, creating wholeness. That gives you fortitude to go forward on your path, on your journey. But again, it speaks of coming from this balanced state with the divine feminine and divine masculine. This is where you actually find your strength to face all of the challenges ahead um, and to be able to um, navigate the obstacles that may come up for you today and ahead. And so I think that is it. And that's pretty much, <laughs> I know I've uh, waffled on a bit, but the energies are just raw. I'm going to try and get some sleep, but um, my eyes are tired, but my uh, thoughts aren't. And so I don't know how many others are feeling that way that, you know, it's um, the energy is lit. And there are such extremes here in the energies now. The the extreme of the light and dark, the extreme of the benevolent and the malevolent, the duality of it and, and the dance that we're gonna be dancing. Is, is a bit mind blowing and is a bit um, breathtaking. Uh, we're here folks we're we're in this now this is it we're going to see things that nobody expected to see regarding um my beloved usa and the people within it i love those guys and girls you know i do um look out for and there will need to be a stand for, not in the name of any political figure or any political party, because that just finishes off what they've been, they've been trying to do uh, to cause this divide. 
it needs to be as one, regardless of your individual battles or, or differences. It needs to be as one because um, the 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 left the the I want to say the left, but then again I don't because it's the left. But actually, the left working with many of the right, you know. So it's the same thing, but already um, solidifying plans with China that came up for me earlier too, um, regarding them coming in to help because of this divide, this terrible civil unrest that has been created by the B and the T rivalry, which is exactly what they wanted. So it's important that you don't give them what they want by giving them this divide. I'm speaking to as many as I can to say, it does not matter what affiliation you have. Um, this is serious enough that you need to be able to dance with the devil if you have to. So dance together, you know, um, make people dance, you know. But this was all part of the plan. Um, I, I mentioned that, you know, uh, China would swoop in. And, you know, it looks like they would have it under the guise of they would swoop in as um, muscle for the inevitable divide and civil unrest and conflict. So by not entering into that conflict, by just entering into... Um, by just entering into... Uh, holding holding the so-called powers that be to the fire for, for true answers, for true transparency. That's a very good way to put a halt to what they are doing regarding inviting um, China to come and help be the muscle, come help clean up our streets. That's what I'm hearing. So don't give them what they want, please. Because, you know, it's not that the rest of the world is relying on you because we've all got pivotal part, play, points to play during this time. Um, but this is a key aspect right now in this moment. Uh, this is a key aspect of it uh, as far as we go to, to, to winning and changing the course of this reality um, for liberation. There's something um, that needs to not be done and that is civil unrest because that is giving them exactly what they want, which I mentioned a while ago. And it, it feels like it's coming up now that we're gonna see the manifestation of the affiliations uh, between politics in America um, along with um, Israel, I can't even think of a way to describe it, um, <clears throat> and China. And this is part of um, this sweet deal they're making for themselves, this sweet new reality that they're making for themselves. Oh, it's so annoying. It is, and it's um, not overwhelming because I transmute the messages, you know, and get over the energy real quick, but it's time. I can't stress that enough. It's time. And so uh, I've got my come to bed eyes <laughs> quite definitely on. Um, so I love you and leave you. I'm sorry if I waffled on in this. I knew I just had to talk. Um, one, get the reading out, because you know I don't like letting you down if I ever miss a day. But two, just talk it through, you know. Everybody's asleep here. And it's just, um, I appreciate you 
taken the time to listen to what I've got to say, even if it is a bit waffly and tired, the messages are key. <laughs> um, leave a comment, let me know how you're feeling about some of the things that were said today, tonight. I'm going to be brave enough and just put this out um, because I think everybody has to be a bit honest right now so that nobody feels like they're going crazy and that there's, there's um, a roller coaster of symptoms of 2020 and 2021 regarding um, the reactions that we're having to these energies. And uh, it's important that it, we can be raw and unfiltered with each other. Um, whereas others who haven't done the inner work and aren't interested in doing so are being raw and unfiltered in a different way. I think it's important for us who are aware and who are awake to what's going on to, to share dialogue to um, and be honest about it, you know, regarding the struggles we're having with children and, and finances and um, sleep. All of those things, you know, are, are very much impacted right now. Um, and so it's important that we can be honest. Let's just put it that way. So I'm being very honest with you and having these um, eyes that <laughs> are nearly shut, even though the thoughts aren't. And I'm going to try and have a, a, um, a salt bath, unwind, and, and, um, and try and get some sleep. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And regarding the heavy messages before I go, the messages and they are what they are the messages if you don't agree with them that's fine and regarding the serious demeanor sometimes that i have to convey with the messages know that i'm here i'm in this and i couldn't be happier than to have a crew like you guys around me you you're a, you're an absolute blessing and privilege to have. And so I transmute these energies real quick. Um, I'm not living in fear. I'm not living in um, oppression or control. You know, I, I'm going about my life. I'm not wearing anything on my face. You know, I'm putting out my truths. So, you know, as far as that is concerned, don't worry. And I want, I want that for you too, that you can take these messages on board to be aware of them, to be armed with them, to have the foresight of them, um, but not live in fear by them. Uh, that would not be my goal at all. Um, that's no good for anybody. I appreciate you all. Balance, wholeness, and sweet dreams.